after 1991, we have witnessed technology savvy banks and their growth. Starting with ICICI Bank, then we had IDBI Bank, SDFC Bank, and uh, now a few more banks like Access Bank, Yes Bank, etc. So these technology savvy banks are dominating the minds of the youth today. ICICI, IDBI, and IFCI. These three were developmental institutions, but after 1990, they started entering into the retail banking sector. And you can see, except IFCI, both the developmental banks, IDBI and ICICI, have evolved into multi-purpose banking. They are now having products, services for every sector. And IFCI is also planning. IFCI is, you can say, laggard. It is lagging behind these other banks, but it is also now planning to enter into retail banking. The developmental banking, which was there to entrust it to them when they were set up, focused on very, very large companies. Developmental banks used to provide long-term loans to very, very large corporate houses. But retail banking focuses on individuals, in small individuals. And retail banking is very profitable and it is growing at a faster pace. So, these developmental banks realized that it is better to grow as a retail banking. So ICIC Bank was the first to launch retail banking and it became very successful. You can see ICICI in all important cities today and it is pioneer in introducing latest technologies in banks. And parallel to ICICI, we also see SDFC Bank, IDBI Bank, Access Bank and other these banks which have evolved and they are now introducing latest products. Today you can see the scenarios of banking is completely different and completely changed. If you go to a public sector bank, it's still different, it's still traditional but the modern technology savvy banks like ICIC, SDFC, they are very customer oriented banks. They provide latest services which are available anywhere in the world. And they are very very customer friendly. You approach them and they will come to you for all the services that you need. The typical problem with the public sector banks, old banking institution is that because they were nationalized and uh, they were developed as a government, you know, semi-government institutions. So the employees in these organizations started behaving like government babus. And they are not very customer friendly. They behave in a little bit bureaucratic manner. Although the scenario is changing now. Banks are changing now. They are training their employees to behave in a professional and corporate manner and uh, the pace of change is fast increasing faster and uh, let's hope that very soon the public sector banks also behave just like other technology savvy banks modern banks it will happen because they have to survive in the market they have to grow in the market they will have to change themselves now let's talk about the government policy with regard to banking. We have discussed that banking is the backbone of any economy. Whether it is Indian economy or any economy, banking is the backbone. Because banks provide finance to industries, to farmers, 
to all important institutions. So banks operate to lift the economy. They operate on the priorities of the government. So it is important that banks should work in parallel with the government policies, with the government. So banks have to work as per the government policies. The government announces monetary policy twice a year, once in April, once in October. And these monetary policy documents spell out how the government wishes the banks to operate, how the government wants the banks to provide credit. You see, before independence, there was no proper formal system on the part of the government to provide loan to the farmers. After independence, the government has evolved the modern banking in a very systematic format. And today, banks provide loans to poor farmers. Banks provide loans to taxi drivers. Banks provide loans to artisans. Banks provide loans to small cottage industries. Banks provide loans to those people who are very, very poor for preparing for their house construction, for other activities. Today, it is possible because the banks are working on the priorities of the government. Banks have to compulsorily provide some loan to priority sector. This is called priority sector lending. And what is priority sector? Priority sector is that sector which has been identified by the government for promotion of poor people, for promotion of those who need support, for promotion and development of agriculture, farmers and for support of common masses. So today banks have to compulsorily provide some loan to the priority sector. This may not be very profitable but this is important for our national priorities. And the loan to priority sector is provided at concessional rate, very very low rate of interest. The loss due to interest is borne by the government. The government provides the support to the banks for all the loss that they suffer in providing concessional finance to the priority sector. So, by controlling banking, the government is able to protect the interests of the country, the government is able to protect the savings of common people, the government is able to channelize the resources in productive sectors. Because you can see, banks are discouraged from giving loans to holders. If the banks will give loans to holders and those people who are operating against the national interest, then what will happen? Our economy will find it difficult to grow. And therefore, banks are regulated by Reserve Bank of India and government so that they are encouraged to give finance in those sectors which is the priority of the government where the government wants the resources to flow. The banks generate financial power and it is important to regulate banks to control banks so that their financial power is used in proper direction. So banks are properly regulated and controlled by the central government for this purpose. Banks, if banking is properly developed and if banking is there everywhere and if every transition takes place through banking, if that happens tomorrow, then we will not have parallel economy, we will not have black economy. Today we have black economy because banking is still evolving, still developing. One day, you will find that all transactions take place through banking route. And one day, you will find that virtually there is no need to keep paper currency in your pocket. Whenever you have to make the payment, you can make the payment through debit card or credit card. Whenever you have to receive the payment, you can receive the payment online in your account. So there will be no need of having paper currency. 
all transactions can be routed through banking channel through debit card credit card and other such systems and thus there will be no black money today we have black money because banking has not fully developed and there are still some places where you don't find banks there are still some people who don't have bank accounts it is still possible the, the evolution of banking is taking place people are learning more about banking they are now becoming technology savvy they are now realizing the benefits of banking they are now finding it easy to have their transition through banking system so banking is evolving people are developing society is developing civilization is developing everything is happening simultaneously banks provide a number of other services which help trade and commerce for example credit assessment services these services are still evolving they are developing bill discounting services again it is still nascent then lc facility to exporters then payment of various installments like you don't have to worry when you have to make a payment the bank will automatically make the payment as per your instructions so these are various additional services which help in development of trade and commerce and so you can understand growth of banking results in development of trade and commerce and development of business development of industry development of agriculture so development of the economy takes place through development of banking if banks in a particular region are fully developed you can say the business the trade the commerce they would also be able to develop they would also be able to grow banks provide opportunities to people there is opportunity for everyone to access credit and this opportunity means you can change your future you can change your fortune a person who needs higher education can access loan from bank educational loan from bank can take higher education and change his life a person who is unemployed can take loan entrepreneurship loan from banks become an entrepreneur and change his fortune a person who is a farmer who needs money to feed seeds to undertake cropping can borrow money from the banks can purchase tractors on financing can purchase seeds and other inputs for agriculture and change his fortune so through banking any person can access credit money resources and change his life so in a way we can say banking helps common people and everyone if you look at today's retail banking which is focusing on common people it is it is growing at a very fast pace amazing pace and developing like anything and because of retail banking you can see large number of people are taking housing loan from banks and they are able to have their own houses which otherwise would have been very very difficult they are able to purchase scooty scooter car or other vehicles as per their needs because of bank financing they are able to access to education loan and provide education to their children because of banking so you can say banking is changing the lives of people now let's look at what is the structure of banking in india banks are typically organized and unorganized organized sector banks include reserve bank modern banks nationalized banks all scheduled banks etc and unorganized banking is what we have for last 4000 years something like that that is traditional money lenders and all those people who were operating earlier also before independence also 1000 years back also 2000 years back also but they have not been able to develop evolve into modern banking so that is unorganized banking that is still operating in many villages where modern banks have not been able to reach 
Now let's talk about the overall banking structure, the organized banking structure. The Apex Bank is RBI, Reserve Bank of India, banker of bank. You can directly have dealing with RBI. RBI deals with banks. If banks need money, they can approach RBI. Banks are regulated, controlled, supervised by RBI, Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India prints currencies and circulates in the country. It monitors the flow of currency, flow of credit, flow of deposits. It monitors working of every bank. Every bank branch has to prepare a Friday statement on every Friday, which gives information of deposits, credits, loans, every basic information. And these data are sent through proper channel to Reserve Bank of India, which compiles the data. So on weekly basis, Reserve Bank of India is able to know what is the status of banking in our country. How much deposits are there? How much credits are there? And it can take appropriate action as per the need of the economy. It monitors the inflation level. If the inflation level increases, the RBI can change policies. You know, it can tighten the flow of credit. If inflation rate is very, very low, it can push credit. Flow of money can be increased. So RBI monitors the inflation, monitors the overall economic activities and takes important actions. And because of the steps of RBI, the inflation is regulated. You can find. So RBI continuously takes some or other action. Whenever you find that inflation is rising, dearness is rising, you must notice RBI is monitoring it and is going to take some action. Then we have scheduled commercial banks. The most important scheduled commercial bank is State Bank of India, which was earlier 